Hello, I'm Sophia Hangyu, Product Specialist at Mirai Asset, and I'm joined again today by Edward Chan, our Investment Analyst, to give us his review of China's semiconductor industry this year. Welcome back, Edward. It's great to chat with you again today. Pleasure to be here. So, Edward, we recently spoke about the Asian semiconductor industry. Now, looking specifically at China, could you give us a brief overview of what we've seen in the industry there this year? Yeah, sure. Um, so, I think this year the industry is driven by two underlying trends. Um, one is the very strong global upcycle in semiconductor that we've discussed more in the last video, and the second is the localization trend in China. Um, where companies are gaining more market share um, in the semiconductor space. So when you have the two trends combining together, it's really resulting in a very strong revenue growth across the board, um, from fabulous foundry, IDM, to equipment suppliers. And could you give us an idea of the magnitude of this growth? Sure. Um, so for fabulous company, they grow a little bit faster because they are the ones that benefited the most from the price hike. So for the companies that we're tracking, we're seeing about close to 70% worldwide growth this year. And then for foundries and equipment makers, they're also growing very fast and at about 50% this year. That's quite significant. I also want to ask about the power shortages. So since September, we've seen power shortages across China, as well as rolling blackouts for some energy intensive industries. Have we seen this impact Chinese semiconductor companies at all? Yeah, so the impact is actually very minimal because um, the semiconductor industry gets the priority on the power supply. Uh, so we only see some OSAT getting uh, impacted in the process. That's good to hear. I'm keen to get your thoughts now on how China is developing across each part of the semiconductor supply chain. Starting with fabulous companies, what have we been seeing from local IC design companies this year? So we've actually seen a few interesting trends. And first is under the global shortage, um, companies actually get an opportunity um, to get their product design in um, to the end customers and try the products. And so this is more opportunity for them to gain market share in the process. And second is that we see a lot of IC design companies being able to leverage um, the capital and the support that they get from the government and the capital market um, to build a stronger R&D team and attract talents. And this has enabled them to launch more product category and go out there and gain more market share. And the third part is, of course, the price hike that we've mentioned that they're benefiting from the overall semiconductor cycle. And what about Chinese foundries? What are we seeing in that segment? So Foundry also benefit from the semiconductor cycle and we continue to see um, their utilization being at a very high level. And with the local um, IC design companies moving so fast and, and growing, of course you will need a very strong local foundries to support that growth as well. And finally on semiconductor equipment, I know China as well as other countries have historically relied on importing these from other global manufacturers. Is China now advancing in its own capabilities within this space? Absolutely. Um, so equipment is also a key part of the localization strategy for China Semiconductor. And we've seen the top equipment makers really making progress over the past few years in terms of trying to gain more market share um, with the local foundries and memory makers. And of course, they're also benefiting from this very strong capex cycle that we're seeing. Earlier, you mentioned there's been an increasing amount of investment going into the industry. How much of this has been influenced by government policy? Yeah, so the government has been very active um, on driving the industry forward. So they have established a state-owned investment fund um, to drive investment into the industry. And they're also lowering the barrier of entry to access the capital market um, for all the IC design companies, foundries, and, and other companies in the industry. So we've seen positive policy tailwinds in this sector. On that tangent, I know the government is also turning its focus towards decarbonisation and I'm sure electric vehicles will have a significant role here. What's the implications of that on the semiconductor industry? So EV is a very exciting area for the semiconductor industry because if you look at the semiconductor content per car of EV, it's actually significantly higher than your internal combustion engine cars. Um, but in the auto market, traditionally Chinese companies don't really have a very high market share in that market. Um, but now as we move to EV, we're seeing very strong and competitive EV companies and startups coming out of China. So I think it will be very exciting um, for local semiconductor suppliers to grow with the local EV companies as well. That makes sense. So to summarize, we've seen a lot of investment go into China semi industry and localization remains a key theme. Well, thank you very much for your time again today, Edward. It was great to chat with you. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to sharing more of our insights with you soon.